So is it a sin to date a non-believer? going to answer that question, right? Based on the Bible, number one, not my opinion, but what the Bible has to say. So this is what God has to say about this topic. So go to the Bible and go open to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verse 14. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Belial is pretty much another name for Satan, devil, right? Or what part has a believer with, a, with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, right? So that's pretty much what the word has to say from 2 Corinthians 6 to 14 through uh, 17, I believe. Some of you guys might not like me after this video, but I'm going to keep it real 100% with you guys. I'm going to give you the everything, no sugarcoating, no nothing. You guys don't want to hear, oh, I can't date this person, I can't that person. But you're watching this video for a reason, right? So I really do pray that God softens your heart on this topic. And that he may really let you see, right, beyond the infatuation that you have for this person. All right, let's get started. The Bible says it very clear that he does, that God doesn't want us to be unequally yoked with non-believers, right? What does unequally yoked mean? I would picture it as like one person is standing up, right? They're both tied together in ropes. One person is standing up trying to run. And then the other person is like sitting down, right? So imagine being tied and you're trying to get to the, like, to the finish line, but you're trying to run. But the person that you're with is sitting down. You are pretty much not going to go anywhere, really. And the only way for you guys to be in partnership is if what happens if you actually stop running and actually sit down next to the person. Meaning running in a sense where like I'm using running in an example of like running after God, running to the finish line, the, the one that the, finished the race, etc. Right. And now you can't finish the race. You got to sit down because the person that you're with is not running with you. And I'm telling you, I completely understand the hopefulness you guys could have. Right. We're like, oh, Gabriel, but like. If I date this person, this person is going to start going to church, then he's going to get saved, etc. But think about it. It is all selfishness. It's not even about uh, the person getting saved anymore. You just want that person getting saved so you don't be living in sin, right? Which is like, bruh, why? Like, don't do that, right? But even because even after they give their life to the Lord, that doesn't give you permission to jump right into a relationship with that person. Why? Because that person started a whole new relationship with God. And now God is going to start transforming that person, everything like, and like that. And that takes time and effort. And it'll be selfish for you to say, you know what? I'm going to jump into this relationship, even though God just saved this person and that person needs to be with God. I'm going to jump in and stuff like that. Now, I'm not saying you cannot help this person out. You can. You definitely can. Right. But jumping into a boyfriend, girlfriend relationship. Uh, uh, uh. And I know it's really hard to like end the relationship. Right. Or end the interest in a non-believer. I understand how it's, it's difficult. I know what I advise you to do is seek wise counsel. Let them know, hey, I like this person. I know this person is a non-believer. What should I do? Etc. And secondly, you should know your identity, right? You are a son or daughter of the living God, of the God of the universe. Once we know our identity, like why would we want to like date a non-believer, right? Like they're not going to worship God. They're not going to praise God. They're not going to pray for you, right? They're not going to read your word with you. Like, and they're not going to like, no. And everything that they do, if they do those things, they're doing it for you. They're not even doing it for God, right? Most of the time, I'm not saying all the time, I'm saying most of the time, right? Why wouldn't you want a other, another Christian, right, that is in the same mission as you? You guys are both in the same path, walking the same path, right? Instead of like you trying and pulling dead weight, trying and trying to get them up so you can start running with you. But he ain't gonna run. He or she ain't gonna run. With that in mind, some of you guys might ask, Oh, Gabriel, how about 1 Corinthians 7? The thing is, 1 Corinthians 7 it's only referring to people, let's say they got married as they were both non-believers and they both got married, right? One or the other gets saved, like the husband or the wife gets saved. And Paul was saying, stick to your husband, stay with them because you're already married, so just stay with them, right? So it doesn't apply to single Christians looking to date a non-believer. That does not apply that, no, and not, and not in that context. And even if you throw away this advice and say, no, I'm not gonna listen to the, what the Bible says, I'm not gonna listen to what you say, Gabriel, fine, it's okay. Right. I'm not I'm not dictating what you want to do. You have free will. Right. But when you get hurt. Right. Just know that that is character development and testimony. Right. Two big things when you get from uh, disobeying God is you get character development. You learn your lesson. You're like, yeah, no, I don't think I should do that. And then you get a testimony out of that so you can advise other people to not commit the same mistake you did. 
So some of you guys might be saying, okay, Gabriel, I listen, I understand, and I know that God's speaking through me that, and everything like that. So what should I do now, right? Good question. First thing is seek wise counsel. You're going to need it after scene number two, and that is to cut off the relationship. Now, there is not really a nice way to cut off a relationship, right? It's going to hurt one or the other, right? Or both of you guys. Honestly, all you're doing is just you're doing the inevitable now rather than later. Because eventually, you're going to have to cut off the relationship, right? Because it is going to drastically affect your relationship with God. Believe me, it is. No matter how much you pray, no matter how much you read your word, it's going to affect you. It really is. If you do it later, it's going to hurt you so much more rather than doing it right now. So if, if any of you guys are in that situation, just cut off the situation or just cut off the relationship like now to let them know, call them up. And again, seek wise counsel. You can even ask your counsel, how should I end this relationship? What should I say? Everything like that. There's people that, again, guys, there's people around you that really do care, right? Um, so don't be afraid. Really don't prevent it. Don't just say, oh, okay, I'm just going to keep trying. No, don't stop. Stop. God wants you to be with another Christian. God wants you to marry another Christian, right? God doesn't want you to be in fellowship with light and darkness. He doesn't want you to be in a, rel a romantic relationship with darkness. Why would he want that? You're his child. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I know this hurt for some of you guys, but it's okay. Um, just take this rebuke and just really, again, just go to God. God still loves you. God is rich in mercy according to Ephesians 2. So don't listen to your heads like, oh, God doesn't want you anymore. You made a mistake. Don't listen to that. It's okay. We all make mistakes. Just go to God. And while you're at it, please leave a like and subscribe for more Christian content like this to help you with your walk with Christ. I post every video of a video every week, so don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss it. And if you have time before you head out, please watch this video right here to know what to do after you just relapse. Because it is a, honestly a state of confusion of like, oh man, what, where do I go from here right after I relapse? Don't worry, if you have no idea what to do, just go watch this video right here. And thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you next week. Praise God! Peace!